Hi, this is Chris again. In this video, I'm going to take a break from writing and testing the floating point multiply logic to actually program an FPGA so you can see the circuit working on real hardware. Before moving on to the content, I want to take a moment to say thanks to those of you who are viewing. I consider this channel to be covering a niche topic in a niche field, so I've been surprised that I have recently acquired subscribers when I haven't posted any videos for a long time. I was even more surprised to see that one of my videos has received over 200 views. I guess someone is getting some benefit from these videos. If you're one of those people, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel and click the bell so you'll be notified when new videos are posted. And thanks, again, really. Like previous videos, the code is available on GitHub. See the comments for the location of the repository. In order to use the floating point multiply code, I needed to create an environment which allows me to enter the data for the multiplier and the multiplicand and display their product. In addition, I wanted to display the multiplier and the multiplicand values so I could confirm that the data had been entered correctly. I implemented the code on a Digilent Basis 3 board. This board uses a Xilinx Arctic 7 FPGA. The board has 16 switches, 16 LEDs, a four-digit seven-segment display, and five push buttons. Because the board has 16 switches, it's easy to enter 16-bit data. Likewise, the 16 LEDs and four-digit seven-segment display make it easy for us to output two different 16-bit hexadecimal values. This slide shows a logical representation of how I'm programming the FPGA. The picture is not an exact representation of the Verilog circuit. The picture is more of a user's guide. In the lower left-hand corner of the diagram, you can see the outputs of the 16 switches are used as one of the inputs to the FPMOL module. That is, the switches are used to determine the value of our multiplier. You can also see that the switches are routed to a 2 to 1 MUX. This MUX controls what value is displayed on the 4 digit 7 segment display. By default, the hexadecimal value shown in the display comes from the 16 switches. This helps me ensure that the number I've entered on the switches is the value I intended to enter. You can also see that the value coming out of the MUX is routed back to a 16 bit register. This 16-bit register sends its output to two different locations. The first location is to the FPMOL module. The value stored in the register is our multiplicand value. The output of the register is also routed to the 16 LEDs, which are located above the switches. The LEDs are used to confirm what value is stored in the register. By default, the value of the switches is routed by the MUX to the input of the 16-bit register. You'll notice that when the board is first programmed, all of the LEDs are off. This signals that the register contains positive zero. In the lower left-hand corner, just above the switches, you'll see the left push button. To load a new value into the register, press and release the left button on the basis 3 board. The left button was chosen because the word left, like the words latch and load, all start with the letter L. So to load a new value into the register, press the left button. When a new value is loaded, you will see the LEDs change. Remember, you are using the LEDs to confirm what multiplicand value is stored in the register. Once the value from the switches has been loaded into the register, the switches can be reconfigured to hold the multiplier. Okay, the register holds our multiplicand value. The switches hold our multiplier value. How do we view the product? Near the top right of the diagram, you can see that the center push button controls the output of the 2 to 1 MUX. By pressing and holding the center push button, the product will be displayed on the four digit seven segment display. The words center and choose both start with the letter C. This should help you remember that the center push button chooses which value is sent to the seven segment display and also back to the input for the register. 
Before actually showing the board in operation, there's one other item to take note of on the diagram. The right push button on the board is connected to the reset input on the register. The words write and reset both start with the letter R. Again, this is intended to serve as a mnemonic to remember the right push button's function in the circuit. Let's load the code onto the basis board and observe the operation. Again, when the code for the test fixture is first loaded into the FPGA, the register will be loaded with all zeros. Consequently, all the LEDs will be off. The seven segment display will show the 16 bit value set by the switches. Let's start with a really simple test. For the IEEE half precision binary floating point format, the value 3C00 represents the floating point value 1.0. They start by setting the dip switches to the value 3C00. That is, I turn on the switches 10, 11, 12, and 13, and leave all the other switches in the off position. To store this value in the register, I press and release the left push button. Notice that when I push the button, LEDs 10, 11, 12, and 13 light up. Again, the LEDs inform the user what value is stored in the register. For a moment, let's leave the dip switches alone. As things are configured, 1.0 is being sent from the register to the multiply circuit. Also, the dip switches are sending the value 1.0 to the multiply circuit. We expect the product of 1 times 1 to also be 1. To verify this, we press and hold the center push button. Doing so, we see the output of the multiply circuit is 3C00. As mentioned earlier, this is the value for 1.0, so things seem to be working. In an earlier video, I walked you through the process of calculating the area of a circle with a 20 centimeter radius using scientific notation. Let's use this setup to perform the same calculation using the multiply circuit. In the top right hand corner of your screen, you should see a link to the video where I show how the floating point value 20 is represented using the IEEE half precision binary floating point format. In that video, I showed that the value 20 is stored as 4D00. I won't go through the details now, but if you need a refresher, refer back to the previous video. Before performing the steps to calculate the area of a circle, let's remind ourselves what we need the multiply circuit to do to perform the computation for us. We start by squaring the radius and then multiplying by pi. To do this, I enter the value 4D00 into the dip switches. Remember this represents the floating point value 20, which is the radius of our circle. I want to load this value into the register, so I press and release the left push button. Note that the LEDs pattern change to confirm that the register now holds the value 4D00. Since the register holds the value 20 and the dip switches hold the value 20, the multiply circuit outputs 20 squared. To see this value as a 16-bit floating point number, press and hold the center push button. As you can see, this value is 5E40. As an exercise, you should show that this is the floating point equivalent of 400. Now I'd like to be able to store the value 5E40 in the register so that I can proceed to the final computation, which is to multiply by pi. I could enter the value 5E40 into the dip switches and then press and release the left push button to transfer the value to the register but that's a lot of work when the FPGA already knows the value. How can I store the value into the register without toggling all the dip switches? I designed the test setup so that when the left push button is pressed, the value displayed in the seven segment LED is the value which gets loaded into the register. That is, if I push and hold the center push button and then press and release the left push button, the FPGA will transfer the product value for me. We can verify this by watching the change in the LEDs. 
As you can see, LEDs 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 14 are lit. This corresponds to the value 5E40. Now I need to enter the floating point value for pi. I can do this using the dip switches. It turns out that the value 4248 hexadecimal is a 16-bit approximation for pi. I'll leave it as an exercise for the viewer to verify this. Now, if I press and hold the center push button, we can see the product of 400 times pi is 64E8. Again, I'll leave it as an exercise to the viewer to convert this value to decimal and confirm that the area of our circle was computed correctly. As a reminder, if you press and release the right push button, it clears the internal register back to all zeros. This is confirmed by turning all of the LEDs off. I've created a repository of the code for this video at GitHub. Please feel free to download the code and adapt it as you see fit. In the next video, I'll look at the heart of our floating point multiply circuit, the 11-bit by 11-bit unsigned integer multiply circuit, and begin the process of showing how to perform this calculation as quickly as possible. Please share this video with friends and colleagues which might have an interest in this video series. Questions and comments are welcome in the comments section. If you found this video useful, please click like below. While you're at it, subscribe to the channel, then click the bell to be notified when new videos are available. Thanks.